Not only does Halo Infinite have a dose of bad news, but somehow they even managed to make it seem even worse than it is in this bizarre live service game where a season apparently now lasts 10 months. The ongoing saga of 343's inability to, un well, inability to get Halo Infinite on track uh, does continue. And the thing about today is we actually have quite a lot of good things that are coming to the game. One issue is timing, the other issue is communication. They're getting reamed right now for this, and they really did not have to. Of course, for a game like this, the plan would be four seasons a year. That actually was their plan. Then that changed to seasons lasting six months. And now they've announced that season three actually won't come out until at least March 2023, which I suppose would be, what, a year and a quarter after the game came out. Two seasons spanning uh, that period of time, which is bizarre. So season three has been moved up to March, or moved back, from November. They've also had to announce that they've cancelled split screen local co op. So yeah, that's there, lovely. There's and, a little bit more to that specifically that we'll get to towards the end of this video, but there is something very, very interesting going on at 343, and it's not very good because to cancel such a major feature and a major feature that Halo is known for when there's something more to it, hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now there is going to be an update November 8th because. Yes, Season 3 has a March update, but there's actually a thing called the Winter Update. If they just called the Winter Update Season 3, then a whole dimension of the shit that they're currently in wouldn't be there. But once again, I really feel like this company is struggling to actually reach out and communicate with its players. Like, they try, but what they say doesn't resonate. So, this Winter Update, right? It's a season, but it's not a season. <laughs> So they've, and that's the thing, the story here in the press, the headlines is season three delayed because they literally did do that. But the update that's coming in November 8th is in fact the largest, most robust update since the game's launch. So they have managed to say, this is the biggest update we have put in the game yet. And they've managed to announce that in a way that has the, the headline being a seasonal delay. It is shocking, the lack of solid strategy that is being displayed here. So essentially what they said is that when they're looking to get seasonality, they know that if they try to release season three on November 8th, when season two ends, then that would really negatively impact our ability to be consistent the way that we want to at a high level of quality for all calendar year 23. So essentially they're kind of saying that the winter update is the big deep breath before the plunge, and then that plunge should be this game being back on track. Plus, I suppose they probably needed something for the game's anniversary. Now, to actually go into what is in the winter update, what's in season three. Okay, so we've got two new maps, free 30 tier battle pass, online co-op and campaign replay, forge beta, which we'll get to in a minute because what has been created with forge mode, again, is something that they should be having an absolute victory lap over They've struggled with the communications. Match XP beta. Yep, it's pretty much going to take a year for match XP to get into the game, but it's finally going to be happening. There's a new game mode called Covert One Flag. There's uh, the December event, Winter Contingency, Joint Fire coming in for the January event, and some quality of life improvements. So that is easily enough content to be a season at least in regards to how they've treated them so far. Now, for Season 3, that's going to have a new arena map, a new big team map, a paid 100-tier battle pass, the M392 Bandit weapon, the Shroud Screen Equipment Custom Games Browser, which, of course, could be pretty damn major when put in combination with Forge, in-game reporting, two new ma uh, game modes, VIP and Escalation, a new Fracture event, new Narrative event, Forge beta updates, and more quality of life improvements. So, basically, between these two things... Well, they may not be the most chunky updates in the universe. Those are the sorts of updates that if they were going to come out every quarter, that you would be happy enough. The game would be getting eight maps a year. You'd be getting, I suppose, 400 battle pass tiers to move through over a year and all of that stuff. So if that is actually a look at what they are going to be delivering going on, then that would yeah. be pretty good. 
but they've totally fucked the communication. Yeah, and it also comes to me like because I'm trying to think, you know, this they're clearly going okay. Well, we'll do season three right. It's going to take a while for us to get it. We don't want to like start a season three that's not all there. So we have to make sure we're starting on the right foot. We get the good PR, the good kind of the positive momentum we need. But it seems like with a lot of that stuff, they're actually buying time for season three now, which means that season three is going to take a long time to make, which then doesn't seem sustainable. If you follow in the sense that it seems like they're they're maybe promising too much and over leveraging well, themselves. If I was betting, I don't think there'll be four seasons next year. I think there'll be three. And yeah, maybe it'll sense. be 2024. <laughs> That's when they can hit four seasons a year. Now, this winter update does have quite a lot of content. The main thing, though, is Forge beta, right? Now, the Forge beta stuff has actually leaked a hell of a lot, okay? And it essentially does look absolutely incredible from the footage that's leaked. As an example, here is Guardian. This is a map that in Halo 3, so many of us will have played for such a long time. I basically adore this map. And here is a beautiful, faithful creation of that created in Forge. Like, that's pretty incredible. There's another example here of somebody just making... Toy Story. Just making the Toy Story room inside Halo Infinite. That is how good these tools with the base 7,000 objects, uh, that's how good they are. And when you go into that leaked footage, there is node graph scripting for custom designed modes. That is powerful damn tools. That's like straight up near development tools. Nav mesh support, which means that bots will be able to navigate in these custom maps. So just think of the sorts of things that people will be able to make, hmm. right? This will, this basically is I'm shipping this machine that lets people build the content. Like taking it for a good example, I even remember in Call of Duty 2 playing zombie maps. If you look at a, some modern games, you've obviously got Roblox, Minecraft, even Fortnite. It's if you want to play a zombie mode or a racing mode, that's all there created in the custom game editor stuff. All of that is is possible for Halo. And you should look at some of the incredible custom weapons that people have been able to make with, uh, you know, with the, yeah, with the Forge beta. So it's pretty insane. And that makes me think, considering that this update has maps, has significant content, a whole bunch of stuff. Why did you not call it season three and just say, hey, season three will be a bit different? Why did you not call it season 2.5? Why not? I mean, it doesn't have narrative content and it doesn't have a hundred level battle pass. That's probably why they don't think they can call it that. Now, it turns out that the winter updates 30 level long battle pass that everybody gets for free is because of match XP, right? So the way that progression had worked that everyone got real kind of frustrated at was it was all based on XP that you get from challenges. Now there will be match XP. That will be the main way to progress through the battle pass, but it's not going to completely, uh, you know, replace challenges. So essentially they're saying that in order to see that this feels good and is paced well, they're just giving it to everyone for free rather than asking people money for an experimental you know, set of a battle pass. And that's pretty good. Yeah, that, that is the actually like the correct thing to do. But it does bring to mind the idea that, okay, so here's Match XP beta coming up just, you know, not that long after a year, they're around the time of a year, they give them up a year or so. Why are players playing a beta for a progression system that everyone kind of wanted in the first place and that's the kind of thing where they kind of for every win they they take by actually getting stuff done and forge looks like a tremendous win match xp actually appearing is a pretty big win assuming it works according to plan but there is this the profound feeling of oh yeah well they can't call this a season they can't charge for it because it's just a continuation of this beta game that people are playing that isn't ready yet and won't be ready for another substantial period of time. And, and that's, that's the awkward part of like live services and and it being a free-to-play game, but also kind of not a free-to-play game because the campaign's there. And they kind of, here's a full Halo game that you all know and love, but also it's a free-to-play game that's not anywhere near done yet, whoops. And that kind of, that like specter of not really knowing what it is seems to have haunted it. And that's why outside of players who just really love Halo and are playing away, everyone's just kind of going, what's that? Is it good yet? I don't know. 
It's awkward. Yeah, it's honestly shocking that Halo was mishandled like this. Yeah. To think that they did a one year long delay, which seemingly was just to get the campaign even to, into existence, I imagine. But that even with that, uh, there are very few explanations that are reasonable for this. If Microsoft were being hands off, like is 343 a shit show? It must be. Were Microsoft not being hands off? What was actually going on? I think more than almost any other studio, this is one that I would like to see the story leak from. Yeah, and that's the thing where there's loads of rumors around it, like especially uh, during the time of Infinite, there's loads of like senior staff shuffling around and people are like, yeah, well, well clearly 343 is a shit show. But it's that awkward thing of what you can kind of you can almost assume to be true because of the results versus it actually being true so it's kind of the the well's a little bit poisoned for r343 actually awful a lot of people go well look at how long it took them to make mcc good look at what happened was when certain games ran to the mcc and just didn't work mm. look at what happened to Halo infinite it took a delay you know it was clowned on for looking the way it did it took a year delay and then it still was clowned on and was clowned on for a full year after that clearly the common denominator here is that's the developer because microsoft have been like uh, attached to a couple of things but this is like the only one that's really feeling you say yeah. you look at like playground or something and obviously you know just making forza uh, horizon games is a different kettle of fish to making halo obviously halo is going to be more difficult more important in the in like the the, the grander scheme and higher expectations to hit but their other studios just seem to be working slowly but working fairly comfortably yeah and and stuff comes out fine it's not just it's not just like this one-off thing yeah. there's halo 4 to contend with which uh <laughs> yeah I, I think i liked its narrative more than most but it was by no means perfect yeah. and in terms of its multiplayer it definitely moved things in a direction that they ended up pulling back from in halo 5. now halo 5 is a game with multiplayer that i thought was extremely fun they even were embracing the competitive side of halo to the point where they essentially just had paintball maps um <laughs> yeah. for for one of the modes but then you look at the narrative of halo 5 and you know that would probably be the weakest entry so they you know halo 4 troubled halo 5 troubled halo infinite troubled sadly enough the track record is that every halo game under this i suppose new post bungie you know era has been troublesome now yeah. if i was to quickly just before we talk about the the future of the seasonal stuff uh, just to check in in steam charts oh, yes. so what we can actually see in the last month if you look here is oh it's actually pretty stable in fact <laughs> the last 30 days um you know, you've got about 6,000, or sorry, 3,600 people. From July, that's an average, that is a slight average drop, but not massively. So what we're seeing is that, yeah, you know, it did taper off, like it bumped up a little bit with the new season, then it tapered off. But on, at least in Steam, it seems to be holding. So they at least do have a small captive audience. That said, it's not a particularly large one, and to get that to be a large one, they need to retain those people, and get new people back in. And that's what takes us to what they say their future plan is going to be, right? So in the Waypoint update, the head of live service did a deep dive, right? And this deep dive was on how they don't believe they achieved what they the, or the players expected from Halo Infinite season model so far, which is an interesting thing for them to say. It's undoubtedly true, but the word, I, I suppose, just, you know, expectations is odd how could they have ever had any expectations when seemingly they should be able to look at the structure of the company and know that these things wouldn't be feasible but he described the aim as achieving seasonality and what that essentially means is more content faster with more consistency two seasons a year doesn't cut it they want to get it under 20 weeks. They want to get it to 13 weeks, ideally doing four seasons a year. That This is not going to happen right away, but that it is the number one priority. And I suppose there are some of the stories of you know that other development studio assisting on Halo, that kind of thing. So maybe they are getting more resources. Maybe they are hiring. Again, though, you look at so many of the successful live services and the thing that they've been built on the back of is follow-through. Fortnite, 
had follow through. It had a lot of content. It had big updates, loads and loads of skins. Apex had a little bit of a stumble or whatever, but they got into just like clockwork. Yeah, that's the that's like the common denominator is just can you follow through immediately? Are you ready to hit marathon pace after you release your game? And three four three were clearly not in any capacity. They were they were just falling all over themselves, barely able to walk after that. And you see that happen with a couple other kind of games. They're like, oh, we need this released in this 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 calendar period. This you know this time for for maximum release. And it's just no, you're profoundly you don't know what it takes to make a live service game. And I think that's one of the things that. Uh, hopefully like the sony's next layer of hey we're gonna have like 50 million live service games no problem hopefully they actually know better but it's like actually making a live service game as opposed to making a game and updating it are very different things and that's where like ubisoft seemed to have done that right with valhalla where they made valhalla but they clearly made valhalla in a way that they didn't actually have enough of the developers just all right smaller team go make more and they're like yeah here's more valhalla happy days that seems to be like actually working for them obviously you know people are a little bit down on ubisoft because they're soulless monsters or whatever else just to, to only making whatever but valhalla at least works for that audience and is bringing them in money which means it's working it might be a quiet audience compared to like core gamers but it's there yeah. same with like almost like the same as halo infinite's captive audience but bigger it's like people will enjoy it but they just need to actually go well, build the game from the ground up so you make more and I, I imagine Halo Infinite was probably a substantial amount in to development before they went. What if we call it Halo Infinite and always update it? Because I imagine that game was like in the works well before live services well, were yeah, everything. We'll get to some of the chaos there. Like Halo 5 did have a live service kind of monetized with almost Mass Effect 3 multiplayer like things of loot. Um, with all the requisitions and stuff, it was a it was a weird situation. Uh, but anyway, they, they say that, right, there's four core things that uh, they need to hit. Infinitely rewarding, personal and welcoming, competitive and fair, and finally, stable and high quality, which they admit they have really let down on PC and they want significant progress on all those by the end of 2023. Yeah, players should expect that. Now, the casualty. Something has unfortunately died in this because feature that they since 2017 promised is in fact not going to ship and that is campaign split screen co-op so you can't sit down and play through halo campaign on the couch with your friends and i know that that is definitely uh, you could say a smaller at least in terms of percentage of people playing the game smaller use case but uh it still is a use case. There have been times where that's something that I would have wanted to do or have done on Master Chief Collection, but now can't do in the new one. So, unfortunate. We do know that the development in this game was very messy, though. So, to go to just a little snippet from Bloomberg's reporting, which was around launch, but this. By the end of summer 2019, Halo Infinite was in crisis mode. The studio decided to cut almost two-thirds of the entire planned game, leaving managers to instruct some designers to come to the office and do nothing while the studio figured out the next move. So, Halo Infinite was originally supposed to be quite a lot larger, and then it had to be cut down. So when you think about the development time this game had, think about running around in circles, creating debt that you're going to have to pay back later in terms of, you know, technical debt, all of that. But again, how many big AAA games only make it to us after a significant rescope? Like, it has happened many, many, many times. Just seems like, even now, even after we've been in this same era of game development for quite a number of years now, maybe, maybe eight, maybe it's probably a good way to kind of say, well, I don't know how much we've changed since 2013, 2014, in terms of, like, this PS4 and Xbox uh, One generation, but, like, it just seems to be that product managers or project managers still don't really know what the hell they're doing because games are so big and complex. They're like, we don't know what we're... How do, we, how do we make a game? It seems a lot of the devs still just literally don't know the answer to that. How do you make a game properly in budget and scope? It just seems to be a skill that's kind of just missing from a huge amount of AAA specifically. I, I would say that it's almost certainly a case of thinking we're AAA... We have the resources. We can plan a really big game. Yeah. But the problem is that there are things, you know, some things scale up exponentially, some things scale up linearly, and some things get worse as a game, yeah. as a team gets larger. 
And I think it's maybe just not appreciating the latter uh, enough. Now, on this, there is a really unfortunate thing though, yeah. for them in terms of PR. And that is that split screen actually works <laughs> on the Series X, right? You can basically do, there's like glitch stuff. Uh, you can turn it on though, and uh, and it works. There's no issue with AIs. There's no crashing in cutscenes. It does seem to work, right? So basically it will work on at least one version of the game. Now, a potential problem there is that this game has got to work in the Xbox One. That's a challenge. And lower-end PCs. Yep. And of course, that all this co-op will be happening in a big, physics open world that's quite large. Those big, physics open worlds tend to be one of the more buggy things uh, that exists. So, it's a bit weird. Obviously, they ended up deciding that they couldn't do this right for everybody who owns the game. And that's that. If I was them, I would say... Uh, on PC in Series X, there you go. Sorry, won't run on the other things, but you didn't upgrade to the new console, or you knowingly bought the less powerful console. It is what it is. That's the awkward part, right? Because back in the day, that might have been fine. Or run at 30 FPS yeah. on the S. That might have been fine, but like now that becomes like a... That's like a legal issue now. Because you've sold the game. You sold the game on these platforms, you made all these promises, you'll have like parody and like for like and all of your other things and now it's like an actual problem it's like oh no sorry we've removed parody we've given we've given preferential treatment to people who pay more money to us because of you know the the, the more expensive console and suddenly that's a pr problem suddenly there's headlines about that you know xbox hill if it have broken their promise to keep the old things happy and then a load of xbox one players who were going to upgrade to the series x now feel hard done by Obviously, some will go and upgrade right away to play the experience that they want, because that's, you know, fine. But I feel like that's one of those things where... And it's the same with the campaign, right? Where, like, just in, in general, where it's like, well, we have to cancel this even though it works, because we can't get it to work all the time, or certifications, stuff like that. We can't get it to work the way we want it to. And it's just that red tape, right? It's the same with how you look at Forge, and there's just maps after, maps for days. Loads of really unique, interesting stuff. Old maps recreated, you're like... Oh, why can just average Joe do this? I mean, obviously, it's people who are really, really good with the Forge tools making it. But, like, why? They're not the devs. Why can they just do that? Like, one person just chills for a couple of days and does that? Why can't 343 just shit out, like, 15 maps and we're done? And it's because of all that red tape, all that process. Well, I have a very, Whereas, I suppose, a very high standard for a map. But then the thing is, because, like, that map, Guardian, that was a remake of a map. Yeah, so why can't they just, just say, hey, yeah, we're going <laughs> to... It takes a lot of time to block out a map and then test it to ensure that it's balanced, blah, 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 blah. So we are going to take the greatest hits of past Halo games and we're going to integrate them into Infinite. Now, of course, there's different things you can do in Infinite. You'll Dude. probably have to make tweaks, right, for the balance of Infinite, but you make a good point. The, the only reason I can think of is literally just why do it yourself and have to go through all the process and have to, you know... Because you're oh well, this might just be a uh, an old map, but we do have to pass through testing. We have to go through balance. We have to run it for so long. Oh, I have to like speak to a manager to make sure I'm allowed to do this kind of thing, as opposed to work on the other thing that I'm trying to work on. And then you look over at, uh, you know, you just kind of go almost like, uh, I guess it's almost like you're just g giving, uh, like getting a mercenary to do it. In a way, like you can skirt all the laws. You go do it. Almost like the plot of the Grey Man, but that idea of just oh yeah, sorry, you're 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 not an official asset. You can do whatever the hell you want. So you can ignore the red tip. You can ignore certification. You can you don't have to test this map. You will test it, but your version of testing will be nav mesh, couple bots, spend half an evening playing it. Oh yeah, it seems to work. Upload it to the to the Ford site. Look at that. Halo Infinite is more content, and we've had we've been able to get around the whatever the hell's going on three four three for having to navigate all this stuff that means they can't just sit down and make content i mean even match xp better take it a year what do you mean here's how many kills you got the adds the numbers throw some numbers onto that done how yeah. is that how is that the better part of a year it's insane to me that that would take so long obviously there's like there's a lot of uh, complexities to how all their code works that i won't understand or have any idea of but still, how can you not just, how can, like, like when an indie dev could do that in an afternoon, why can't these companies actually harness that ability and go, yeah, they'll just do it? Just, like, that's the, that's the part, it's just do it. 
just make the content easy. That's that's the part that I don't, and I think this is where like the view of like, the average player will come in as well when they're sitting looking at Forge, going, "You made a Toy Story room? We haven't had a map in six months. What? What are they doing? Anything there? Are they just getting paid to lie around? Obviously not. They're they're working hard, but you're like, what what is going on? What? Why do we have to? And this is a thing that happens when you like, especially when you're older and you're compared to the glory days of like shooters, and you go. But Time Splitters had 47,000 game modes and 8 million maps. <laughs> and you go, okay, well, the, well, the maps, you know, higher fidelity, more artists, you know, that that's fine, okay? The like, maps are better balanced and, you know, for the ranked experience. But still, like, how, how do you not have 47 million game modes? Why do you not have zombies and virus and infected and all those ones flying around just, just doing crazy shit all day to have fun? Why is it not there? And I assume it's because AAA development is has its head stuck up its own ass and then it's tipped it in there with red tape so it can't pull it out and do anything <laughs> useful. That's what it feels like. And Halo Infinite seems like the worst example of that where I don't know what needs to happen in 343 but it is genuinely embarrassing. Even though they're doing, they seem to be like actually getting some stuff done. Yeah, and like but they're the, the entire, working for the long term. Yeah, but the entire process is like, this is really quite embarrassing at the minute. And I'd love to see nothing but success for them in Halo. But, like, man, it's just so... It's sad to watch. It's sad to watch. Yeah. I mean, if I just go to... Uh, this is a 2011 quote from <laughs> Phil Spencer. <laughs> if we lose our way with Halo, we lose our way with Xbox. Because Halo and the importance of games like Call of Duty and other shooters, that state of the art needs to continue to move forward. And our team at 343 need to move forward with that. There's, that's always going to be one of our success criteria. So he said that 11 years ago, and I think with Halo Infinite, definitely the mark uh, has not been reached. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Infinite is doing, you know, relatively speaking, worse than PC. Yeah, for sure. Right? I, I think, relatively speaking, it will be better on console. But still, this is a ridiculous and silly situation that really never should have happened in the first place. This game was obviously just not planned well. They obviously sprinted to the finish with the team that they had. And that left them just with without steam, frankly. Yep. Right? Will, yeah. Burnt out. And a lot of the time when people, uh, you know, people will often move on to a new job after they've shipped, right? That's like one of the more natural places for, uh, for turnover within this industry. So... They sprint people to the finish. Everyone's probably just completely knackered, thinking, oh my god, and now it's the live service soup for 10 years instead of making a cool new project. And I've just had, oh, no. Yeah. And it doesn't look like we'll be capable to do this anyway. Screw this. I'm out. I'm going to move to Riot. I'm going to move to Santa Monica. I'm going to do anything like that. You know, for the people who can. Yeah. And I just have to imagine that left them just completely with their pants down after lunch yeah and, and that's pretty much that until we get really good leaks on this because hmm. we we just there's bloomberg's reporting there's stuff from that era you know two-thirds of the game being scrapped <laughs> which does make you think where the hell was that plot originally supposed to go yeah well that's basically that yeah halo infinite will very soon have a substantial amount of content but it'll be on the backs of fans and people who love halo as opposed to 343, who seem to be running around in circles for whatever reason that is. Just seems to be the case. And it's unfortunate. If they just had have said, September update, season three looks a little bit different. And here's what we're doing. Season four starts next March. If they just said that, <laughs> yeah. it would have changed the headlines. Because now what people think about, what people know is that the six month season turned into a 10 month season. They may not even know about the winter update and how that is actually the largest update the game has had yet because of this failure and effective communication. I think it's because they themselves must have felt on the back foot in terms of their communications with their most uh, engaged audience. Mm -hmm. So they probably decided not to have a massive veneer of marketing over the whole thing and maybe over explain themselves and give too much detail, that kind of thing. And I know that all people say, well, no, they should be doing that anyway. Like, what, what the hell? I'd say, yeah, true, absolutely. But they should have been very strategic with this. 
And I think they did not, like in terms of development, seems they're actually making the correct strategic move yeah. for this as a 10 year lifetime game. But the short term, they have messed that up. So it's a pretty sad situation, but ultimately that's what it's like. Halo Infinite is going to have, other than its launch, the highest density of new content over the next like four to six months. Yet it has continuing bad press and that's quite an achievement. But it's okay because Phil Spencer said in, uh, I, think, I think it was 2021, he said, Halo will be here 10 years from now. Is Infinite the linchpin or whether it survives that long? Absolutely not. So it's fine. Even though he's saying Xbox is Halo in 2011, now in 2022, it's, it's okay. If, 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 it, if it is just a, just a stepping stone. If it goes wrong, whatever. Halo, Halo will live forever. It's okay. Between so. Infinite and between the television show, <laughs> Halo is going as strong as it ever has. Oh, absolutely. Oh. With that Pain. rather depressing note for a absolute beloved childhood franchise, I've got to say, thanks for listening. If you are playing Halo Infinite, it actually does seem that things are totally on the up for, you know, the experience after you, you click play on Steam and then you're inside Halo. But man, that out-of-game story, they have messed that up. So let me know what you think. We'll see you next time.